there's only one reason to make a movie, and that's is if you have something to say or if you have somewhere to take the characters. And when we started thinking about this idea, and it was Andrew Stanton who kind of first pitched this idea of there's more for Woody, right? That there's 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 more to tell here. Academically, what Andrew had pitched was something along the lines of Toy Story 3, because it had a great ending, and a lot of people said, oh, that's the ending. I mean, even my parents were like, that's the ending. And Andrew's kind of answer to that was, no, that's the ending of Andy's story. You know, Andrew, Andy, um, is the, is, he's not the, the protagonist, he's sort of the external plot. And that was a great ending for him, but Woody, he landed on his feet certainly, and it was a beautiful kind of a piece of storytelling, but it's not the ending. And that, that, just that foot in the door of what if you could take Woody and show him in a new world, show him with a different challenge. Duke is, uh, well, you know, he's a, he's a motorcycle stuntman, so he's full of bravado. But, um, you know, if you remember those toys, they, not to knock on any specific toy, they didn't quite do the jumps and wheelies that I remember in the commercials and, or that we did. <laughs> so we thought, what if we played up that? What if we dramatized that? And poor Duke is kind of all front. He's all talk. He's a posable action figure, so he basically just hits poses all day while he's talking to you. But when it really comes down to it, he never could do what was in this commercial, and that's really heartbreaking and tragic to him. And so if it ever comes up, he kind of melts like butter because he was never able to do it. In fact, poor Duke Kaboom had one toy, one kid, it was named Rajan, who opened it up on, on Christmas Day and did one jump. And when he fell flat and it wasn't like the commercial, he turned his back on Duke. So Duke, on one, on one hand, he is the most bravado, kind of macho, tough guy. And on the other hand, he's just a softy because he's, his kid never really played with him and he can't stop crying about it. So he takes a lot of coaxing to, to get where he needs to be. Forky is um, he's new to the Toy Story world and he's new on many levels. We kind of think of him as uh, he's new in the world, he's new for the characters in the movie and he's new to the audience. He kind of, he's our first handmade toy, right? So Forky is um, something that Bonnie makes at her first day of kindergarten and uh, just a little spork with googly eyes and pipe cleaner, whatever she's got there to make them. And you know, you've seen kids do that. My kids certainly do, where they'll make things. And so he's this challenge to us because we thought, well, if you made a toy, would a toy, would that toy be alive? And so Forky's our answer. That turns out the answer is yes. If you are a kid and you love the toy you make, that's a toy. And this is all new to to, to Woody and the other toys. What's cool about Forky is he doesn't know the rules of being a toy that Buzz and Woody and you know Bullseye know. Uh, you know to flop down on the floor when anyone walks into the room. So he's actually quite dangerous because he doesn't know how to behave. And uh, we think that was a lot of fun. Josh is effortlessly funny. He's got great sense of story and character. He's a great writer. I mean, he crafted some of the great scenes in the film Up. I worked on that film. And he was the head of story on Inside Out. And then he directed Riley's First Date. So he's had this kind of natural progression of coming up under some of our big directors and heads of stories and writers and so forth. And so plugging into Toy Story, which he cares deeply about, made perfect sense. He loves these characters. And I also think he loves them but was also not afraid to take it somewhere new. And that was from day one what was important to us, that we wanted to have a, we wanted to honor Toy Story, but give it a little bit of a different flavor, a little bit of a shift, um, you know what I mean? A little bit of, a, of its own lane. And so Josh was instrumental in, in creating that. Music is huge, and Randy, um, we wanted Randy's score, we wanted Randy to score this film from day one because, well, obviously he scored the first three so beautifully. Uh, there was something about the, the music that came up early because people, you know, there are a lot of people at Pixar that um, are working on this film that said things like, oh, that was my first movie. And that song is the first song I remember. Like, it, the music and the song, You've Got a Friend of Me, I think helped, well, it's just part of the fabric of Toy Story. So we couldn't imagine it without Randy. What was cool, obviously, Randy is an American treasure. So working with him has just been a great honor. And what was cool about it was, he, like the actors and how we feel about the film, he didn't want to just come on and do another Toy Story. He wanted to shift a little bit and adjust. So as we talked about the, the, the story and the characters and where we were going, he just organically started thinking about the music a little differently. And I think what he's done is created one of the great scores where it's rooted in the sort of the history and the grammar of Toy Story musically, but somehow tonally shifted. I mean, his theme for Forky or the music he plays under Gabby Gabby they feel completely new, and yet somehow, in the world, how he does it, I'll never know, but sitting on the stage and hearing that live, that was brought us to tears at how beautiful it feels. So it's just a huge, it's as important as the visuals to us, that, that piece of it.